the Red Raven Coaches Show here on the Red Raven Sports Network. I'm Shane Neal, and we're here at Gigi's Burger Bar. And, of course, a uh, little bit of a later start than normal. That's because some so, of some severe weather in southeast Kansas, northeast Oklahoma. That's also why we're not currently on the Mighty 690. We're hoping to change that a little bit later this hour. But we did want to have a show, of course, with the playoffs coming up on Saturday. A lot to get into. And we're joined by Coach Turner. And, uh, Coach, uh, you know, a little bit of a weird night uh, with a weird start and kind of a different setup and some dark clouds outside. But now we're finally ready to talk a little basketball. Oh, yes. It's looking a little scary out there, but no, I'm ready to talk a little basketball myself. Absolutely, and your team, uh, really, I think the theme of this week with the win over Colby and then the win over Independence, I really think your team got back to their principles defensively. I think back-to-back -back, really good games on defense, uh, active in the passing lanes, good uh, good efforts on the glass, uh, just the stuff that, you know, we saw this team do well heading into the postseason last year of just kind of those effort plays and those plays that really changed the outlook of a game. I think your team did a really nice job of this week. Yes, we did. I thought overall, you know, all the teaching and the training we've done with our team, just with the fundamentals of the game of basketball, crashing the boards, blocking out, you know, the defensive side. We do drills all the time on the different scenarios on defense, and our girls are starting to understand it and starting to pay attention to those detailed things, and which, which helps you win a lot of games. Something that really has stood out to me about this team, especially against Independence, too, is uh, we've talked about, you know, your team's preliminary scores this year with Kylie and Bailey and Ivy's really come alive as that third score here in the second half of the year but I think your offense has found a groove in those three being the focal point but at the same time players like Tatana players like Natalia players like Karis players like Olivia Daya this week kind of know when they have the opportunity to get a shot up know when it's a smart time to take a shot and that's when these role players it really feels like you're clicking where uh, you know on a possession where you know you can't get the ball off a screen to Bailey or get a uh, get the ball to Ivy down low uh, some of these players are really starting to get a feel for when's the best time to go when's the best time best time to get their shots up uh, and I would and say your offense has been you know uh unbeatable but it's been just really clean and i think that's uh, that's important this time of year yes i think we all just everybody knows their role and kind of we kind of pr predicted that people were going to take them to away and we needed some other girls to step up and make plays and let it come to them and i think this last couple of weeks we've done a good job of just letting the offense come to them when you leave them open you know you punish them and that just goes by just getting in that gym you know we make them get in the gym shoot 100 extra shots uh, uh, four days a week and, and 50 free throws every day. And um, I think it's just kind of paying off for us. I think so, too. And I think, you know, we talk about, you know, two players that really did have good weeks. And uh, Olivia Daya got some minutes on sophomore day, hit some, uh, hit some shots, played some good minutes, and then, yeah, she got some more minutes against Independence. Had eight points. Hit a big shot at the end of the uh, at the end of a quarter. Had a a three with the shot clock winding down. And it just it's another weapon to have where this team uh, really I think can space out the floor better than a lot of teams in this league. Where you have Ivy down low in the post, Ivy can spread the floor too. But you get Ivy set up down low, and then you have three, four players on the perimeter, maybe a slasher in there as well. It's, it stretches out a defense. And when you have a player like Olivia or a player like Natalia who knocked down two threes as well, a player like Karis, a player like Ray, uh, these players, they can just step in and be ready to shoot threes, be ready to be that slasher, be ready to you know d do whatever it takes. But I think your team has, like you said, bought into kind of the, the, the system of the offense, and now they're just kind of sliding around. They're moving parts in that system, and it's working really well. Yes, we do move the ball well, and, you know, Poor, not poor Olivia, but Olivia does a really good job. She comes to practice every day, works hard, and I always tell them, you know, if you ain't playing as much as you want to play, um, you know, make me look like the fool and, 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 and go out there and play hard. And, and she has been doing that. She comes and works hard. She's in the gym shooting. And, you know, our, uh, myself and the coaching staff, we got to get her more minutes. And, you know, we're counting on her to step up and, and make some plays, especially when they're taking those three away. Absolutely. And uh, fine, here as we uh, – we're going to – address something here in a second but I want to talk about uh, Tatana Woods Black Owl as well for a second we always talk about Tatana being a big game player and being a player that really gives you uh, really just big minutes and big games and uh, impacting the game in ways other than scoring had three points but you look at the stat sheet the final stat sheet four rebounds eight assists three steals three blocks didn't turn the ball over and I think, uh, you know, it's it's rare for a player that finished with three points that you can comfortably say they were the best player on the floor all night. But I think that's what happened last night. I think every time, you know, when Tatana was out there all 29 minutes that she was out there, uh, she was the player that was just in control. And that's huge for this team. 
Oh, she's definitely our, our battery to our team, and she just runs the show for us. She takes care of the ball. And I know she didn't shoot it well last night, but she was in that gym this morning shooting, getting shots up. And she knows we're going to make a major run in these playoffs, and she's just going to do her part. She's a, she's a gamer. She's a great team leader. She's an unselfish player, and she works extremely hard all the time. Yeah, she does. And something we talked about a little bit in the postgame show uh, after the game yesterday was, uh, you know, Kylie Ortiz and what Kylie has done. Uh, at times this year, I think, you know, Kylie's been uh, one of the, you know, toughest defended players in this league because of what she accomplished as a freshman. And, uh, you know, there's some games where you see Kylie only get three, four, five shots up over the course of a game. That's not always her fault. That's playing a lot of good defenses. But last night, like you mentioned, like you hinted to, a little more emphasis on the defensive end from Indy on Bailey Lehman. And Kylie was aggressive from the jump. Every time she had a look, she was sending it. And I think that aggressive, that uh, fearless Kylie Ortiz is really what's key for this team in the postseason. Yes, we need her to make some shots and step up and let it come to her. And I thought last night she just let it come to her. She wasn't out there seeking her shots. She just was getting in the open gaps, moving it a couple times to get the rhythm. And she stepped up, and every time she got a chance to get away from them, she did a good job of stepping up making a big-time play. And not only did she – she makes some threes. She also has some assists, and she played really good defense. And, you know, that's what we need from our sophomore uh, leaders. It's the Red Raven Coaches Show here on the Red Raven Sports Network, and uh, we're continuing to monitor some severe weather in the area. So uh, just a, 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 head, a heads up to everybody watching and listening that uh, at any time we could have to step away for a moment. But, uh, Coach, uh, something else that we've talked about a lot in the second half of this season is uh, your team really one of the best in the league at distributing the basketball, and that's something you've talked about a lot in the last couple of weeks is not dribbling the ball as much, keeping the ball moving, looking for that open shot. Your team ends up with 21 assists and only six turnovers against the Pirates. One of those six turnovers was dribbling out the clock at the end of the game. So really only five turnovers, 21 team assists, uh, and you know you talk about the rebounding, you talk about good shots, you talk about finishing at the rim. That's all good things, but taking care of the basketball might be the most important thing this time of year. Oh, you got to take care of the basketball. And, you know, we were watching film or just watching how some of the turnovers today in practice, we were watching just how some of the turnovers that we've made throughout the year. And we all know a lot of them contributed to putting the ball on the floor. And, you know, we used an example of last night. I thought we, 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 we did put it on the floor some, but we looked first. We looked to make that play first. And then we played. Then we had an outlet. Then we played under control which helps you cut down on the amount of turnovers. Coach, uh, something I want to ask here before we start talking about uh, the Colby Trojans, of course, your matchup in the Region 6 tournament on Saturday. Uh, I'm curious your thoughts with the uh, the, the full bracket coming out uh, last night after all the conclusion of the games. and You've got some int intriguing first-round matchups here, Cali, Cloud County, uh, as well as Seward and Pratt, Garden and Independence. Uh, out of you know, we'll talk plenty about your team and t plenty about Colby in that matchup, but out of all the teams that are playing on Saturday that – isn't your game. Who's a team that really stood out to you in your matchups this year, and who do you think is uh, going to be a scary team that's playing uh, in the first round of the playoffs? Oh, I, I think Garden City, definitely. They've been playing really good lately. As of late, they beat us. They just guard you. They play hard. You know, uh, Seward, Independence, you know, I know they didn't play their best last night, but they're a sneaky team. Cali's a sneaky team. They've been playing. Their bigs are starting to come around and be a force down there. And I mean, you know, say it, it, it any any team in this league, man. Like, there's no dog. For, there's no easy games in this league. And from the bottom to the top, they all everybody. There's a lot of great coaches in this league, and they they prepare. And I know they're all preparing for these playoffs, and it's going to be some good games. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you mentioned the Pirates, and of course, like you said, last night, not the best example of what they've been doing this season. But you talk about that team going into a postseason game, having the experience of a Sabrina Larson and Serenity Eccles and having the, a player that can light it up like uh, Nikoyak and like Jezere Vick, a couple sharpshooters that can get hot, and having uh, Doso down low, who's a really good interior defender. Uh, they have all the ingredients to be a successful postseason team. It's just all about, like you said, a lot of these teams have the parts to make it work, and it's all about who, who gets all those parts together in time. Yes, I mean, even like in last night, I know – Number 10, I, I can't pronounce her name right, but she's been out the last couple of games. And, you know, I think when she came back against us, it kind of messed up their chemistry a little bit, just how the ball moves and all that. But she's a very talented player, can really shoot it. And I, I, I expect them to go into the playoffs, going out to Garden City on a mission. You know, I think they both kind of sp split uh, this year. And, and I think it's going to be a really – close game. I, I'm curious your thoughts because, you know, a trend, at least in the first half, that I thought was interesting. 
was your team getting off to really good starts in each quarter. He started off the game up 13 to nothing. Uh, he started off the, uh, the second quarter on a 13 to one run. It really felt like you almost caught Independence off guard at the start of quarters and really just kind of got out running and really had them playing catch up. But as the quarter went on, Independence settled into a groove and closed the gap each of those first two quarters. Now in the second half, your team did a nice job of holding on to that expanded lead. But uh, in those first two quarters, what did you see that one, your team got off to such good starts in each quarter? And two, what did the Pirates adjust to kind of start closing the gap in each quarter? Well, you know, they started. we started out making shots early and uh, we got the run and we spread out their zone and just we just attacked them and made some good rhythm shots and uh, then they called a timeout made a, a great counter move and came back at us and then we called a timeout and kind of was back and forth but you know that second half the second half of the game we had to get up on their shooters a little closer and you know we always say touch it we had to get up where we could touch their face because they could definitely they can definitely shoot it Absolutely they can, and uh, Coach, let's start looking at this uh, this matchup with the Colby Trojans, round one of the Region 6 tournament, and uh, it's it's funny to me that for the second straight year, uh, you're going up against a team that you saw very recently. Last year, of course, you played the Pratt Beavers about 10 days after you saw them in the regular season. This year, you're going to see Colby uh, about a week after you saw them, so uh, this is... Uh, I don't know uh, your personal preference on would you rather see a team that you just saw and maybe both teams have a, a one-up on recruiting and a one-up on scouting, or would you rather see a team that you haven't seen in a little bit and kind of start fresh? What would be your preference? Well, part of me, I'm kind of having mixed emotions, A, because two years ago, you know, two years ago, we kind of in the same scenario, and, and the Kobe team came in and beat us. We were the five seed. They were that same seed, and they came in and beat us. And so um, I, I, we're going to use that as some leverage with our girls and say, hey, we've been in this situation. We better not overlook this team. And, and I know Coach Spence will have them coming. They're going to be much better. They've had an extra day to prepare for us, and they're going to put up a fight. And if we come in there with the wrong mentality – and, and mindset is not going to be a good outcome. No, you're right. And I think, uh, you know, something that stood out to me in each of your, your your two games against the Trojans this year is they do like to slow the pace down, where your, your team hasn't had their best offensive outputs of the year against Colby. But I think really uh, your team has embraced kind of playing a slower tempo against the Trojans, and your defense has had some of their best games against Colby. So uh, I think it's impressive, and I think it shows the veteran experience on your team of, uh, you know, being able to play different styles. Of course, you want to force your opponent to play Coffeyville style of basketball. But I think for a lot of teams that have some youth and some freshmen, it might be, uh, you know, panic time if you're not playing the way you necessarily want to play. But I think your team has played games against a Dodge City and against a, 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 a Hutchinson where they play a little bit faster paced. And then they've also been able to slow it down and play some half court, uh, half court offense, half court defense against a team like Colby. So these two matchups against the Trojans, what have you seen and what has been uh, what has led to the success from your defense? Well, we want to, you know, definitely play some good defense and then try to get out and run. We want to get out and run on them and uh, just make them get up because, you know, not very deep as far as their bench and try to wear them down at that long six-hour drive and so we want to try to wear them down and 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 get to and they got some really good shooters and we got to get to their shooters and uh, just one and done one and done on the shots but the main thing is just not letting their shooters get going and coach spence does a really good job of running a lot of different sets and kind of keeps you off balance and we just got to pay attention to details and, and stick to the game plan and you mentioned their shooters and uh, of course in the second matchup they had ariana perez come back she was not available for that first matchup but they do have like you mentioned some good shooters on this team Sophia Lopez Stella McIntyre uh, Perez Sophie Bennett hit a couple threes in that last game but uh, your team really for the most part has done a good job of keeping them below their season average from beyond the arc and I, I you know I, I think your team uh, has good perimeter defenders but I think you know when we talk about uh, with Coach Herkelman, sometimes we talk about one or two guys that you put on the other team's best player. I don't know if your team necessarily has that. I feel like your team's kind of more of a, a you know a tight knit unit of a defense. Where I don't know if there's a, a player that you consider your top defender. Maybe you have one that you consider your top defender. But I think it's uh, it shows in a game like Colby where they struggle from beyond the arc because you have three four players around the perimeter that are contesting almost every shot from the outside. Well, you know we we, we switch a lot of screens and uh, you know but back to your questions about who's our 
top defenders. You know, we like to lean on Natalia. You know, Bailey can really guard. Kylie does a good job. T does a good job. I mean, uh, Janae Blackwell does a really good job. Lexus, they all get out and know how to guard. They know how to play defense. And that may even J. Maya, you know, she, she, she's a shot blocker in there and knows how to use her body. And she has really good timing. So, you know, we, we trust that they do know how to tag. We call it tag. And uh, they tag up and uh, do a really good job of making it tough on their shooters. Coach, uh, you know, you mentioned, of course, uh, Coach Spence and the experience that he has. And I'm curious what that, uh, you know, what that feeling is like going into a postseason game where it's a team that, like you said, uh, you can't overlook because it's a team that I think has played significantly better in the second half of the season versus the first half of the season. I know the, uh, your team ended up winning, I believe, 59-43 or whatever it was in the, in the second matchup. But I think for a good portion of that game, it was pretty tight. And, uh, you know, your team went on one or two runs that really kind of opened it up. But... Uh, we've seen Colby twice now kind of shoot below their averages. So with that anticipation and with a, a coach like Coach Spence that has the experience that he has, how do you game plan for a coach that really, you know, probably <laughs> is, not, is not phased by the moment at any point like this anymore? No, he's a great coach, and, and we just got to be disciplined. And if we can be disciplined and, you know, they'll get us on a couple sets. I'm sure, you know, like, like I said, they had a couple new couple days extra to, to prepare for us and, you know, he's going to scheme it and figure out how to stop our stuff and how to eliminate some of those runs and just from his pure experience. And we just got to be able to stick to our details, stick to our game plan and make adjustments as the game goes and uh, just know where their shooters are. That's going to be the key. You got to know where their shooters are. And, and then we gotta just got to attack the rim. Coach, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse because I feel like I bring it up every time we talk. But at this point of the year, free throw is so important. And we've seen uh, over the course of the season players like Ivy Fox, uh, players like uh, Kylie Ortiz, players like Bailey Lehman, Natalia Jones have gotten better at the free throw line as the year is going on. I think early in the season, Ivy was about 50%. And uh, in the second half of the season, much better. Uh, so your team has improved at the free throw line, and obviously in a game, uh, maybe maybe not Saturday, but you know, with your season on the line every single night, there's going to be close games, there's going to be important free throws, and it's got to be a good feeling to know that your team's growing in that department instead of regressing. Well, I'm glad they are growing. We do make them make 50. they got to make 50, so if it takes them 75 free throws to make 50, we keep track of all that and just kind of monitor it and make sure they are in the gym. And I just think when you set and make – a bunch of free throws. It just helps with the form shooting. It helps with all that and the concentration level. And and, uh, and I, I just think it's hopefully knock on wood, it's paying off for us that we do require them to get in there and shoot 50 plus free throws a day. Coach, uh, Saturday is going to be Fan Appreciation Day at Nellis Hall, and uh, with that, they're doing free uh, admission for uh, for students and fans, of course, and uh, also discounted seats for uh, the, the uh, reserve seats as well. So with that being said, of course, you want a great turnout at home for a home playoff game. That's a big part of playing a postseason game at home is having that advantage in the crowd. Uh, but what is uh, you know the excitement of having a, a good turnout with a, a Fan Appreciation Day? How does that fire you and your team up for this kind of game? You know, our fans have been great. I think they're one of the best fan crew in the whole, the whole Jayhawk. I know in Kansas, I mean, they do a really good job of following us. They do a good job of coming to the games and rooting us on. And, you know, I, I, I just think it's for the college and, and our men's and women's basketball program. We just want to show some appreciation that we do appreciate all that they do and their support that they give us. And it just goes a long ways. I know our, our players enjoy it. I, I just can, there's a numerous of, of fans that are always bringing stuff for us. And so we just wanted to show a little appreciation for them and go out and a give them a good show and go out and play hard for them and make it worth their time absolutely great stuff from coach tony turner as the lady ravens get ready for the colby trojans on saturday afternoon round one of the region six playoffs and if you're listening to this and you just you know you just found out about fan appreciation day you just found out about the game saturday at two uh I know Coach Turner would love to, and his team would love to see it. Nellis Hall supporting the Lady Ravens. Yes, I do. If, if you ain't got anything, don't have anything to do, please come out and support us. We need all the all the help we can get. Absolutely. Let's take a quick break. We'll have much more on the Red Raven Coaches Show right after this. Again, if you're just now joining us, some severe weather in the area. We're monitoring that as best we can, but we are kind of, uh, you know spontaneous tonight we may be going to break coming back from break at kind of a moment's notice but we're going to take a quick break we'll switch focus to coach Herkelman and the men when we come back here on the Red Raven Sports Network thanks
Red Raven Coaches Show here on the Red Raven Sports Network. And, uh, again, uh, we're monitoring some severe weather here in southeast Kansas, so appreciate everybody's patience. We uh, may be, you know, heading back to break here in a moment's notice with uh, some severe weather in the area, of course, trying to keep everybody safe here tonight. But uh, we move forward to uh, Coach Herkelman here tonight. And, Coach, uh, you know, first, uh, it has to feel good that you're uh, on the Coaches Show here with uh, three wins in your last four back-to-back -back wins. And uh, finally get to talk about a team that's playing, uh, pr playing some good ball. Yeah, I don't know what – you know, we, we win a few games and all of a sudden we're getting uh, rain and tornado and lightning <laughs> warnings. And I don't know, it's kind of weird. Uh, but, yeah, um, three out of the last four games we have played well. Last two, uh, getting two in a row. It's It's been a while since we won two in a row. Uh, I think it was first of December, so it's it's been a while. But uh, to be able to finish the year uh, on a pretty positive note, the way that we played the last couple and – and other than the Hutch game, which we knew that was going to be a tough game over there, uh, the Dodge City win, and then uh, the other two wins that we've had recently are, are uh, really good for us going into the postseason. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the weather, just another adver uh, thing of adversity added to this team. This yeah. Year, but <laughs> it's always something. I know. No kidding. But, uh, you know, I want to start it off with something I talked to Coach Proctor a little bit about last night. But, uh we know who your, your top three scorers have been pretty consistent for most of the second half of the season, Janai, Chris, and Brian. Uh, and I think they're really, you know, they've stepped up on the offensive end and are really playing their best uh, efficient basketball over the last couple games where they combined for 70 points in a win against Colby. They combined for 62 in a win last night against Independence. And uh, Chris, uh, you know, just shot eight of nine and then shot 50%. And Janai's hanging around 50%. And Brian didn't shoot 50% last night, but he hit a, some huge threes in the second half, got to the free throw line. But it feels like those three, obviously, if your team's going to do anything in the postseason, those three need to be on their game on the offensive end. And it feels like in the last two games, they've been just that. <clears throat> yeah, no question. Uh, you know, Janai and Chris have been the main two guys uh, for most of the year. And uh, Brian has been emerging, um, you know, consistently uh, through the second semester. Uh, he He's had some really good games. He had uh you know 25 last weekend and and uh you know and then to be able to go up there last night and i know indy hadn't won a game but it's still a rival game and and uh you know their football guys showed out and that gym is loud it doesn't matter you know the size of the crowd and there was they had a decent crowd there last night uh but just to to be the point guard and run the show when it's in, in an environment like that where it's noisy and you kind of a little bit rowdy, you got to keep your head about you. And then yeah, he made some shots also. So Brian's been playing well for us. Uh, the other guy that uh, has emerged a little bit recently is Charles uh, Caparasso. I mean he he's uh, he got 18 last night uh, in just under 20 minutes of play. Um, he got in foul trouble the first half, so. Um, having him score and then, you know, CJ doing a little bit, uh, yeah, it's, there's a lot of guys playing with some confidence right now. Yeah. And you mentioned Charles and that's a, that's a great point because, you know, obviously, uh, coach Proctor mentioned, of course, he's still got some work to do in the weight room, putting on some muscle, putting on some strength that'll help on the defensive end. That'll help with getting rebounds. But you said it on the offensive end, he's gone from a guy that was really just a big body out there, just kind of filling space, to a guy that's creating shots, finishing around the rim. He's got some good post moves to him now. Uh, he's uh, he's athletic. He's he, he moves well for a big guy. And uh, you like you mentioned, he just seems to be getting better and better every game. He set a career high against Colby, and then he, he beat it against Independence. So yeah. uh, I don't know if he's going to be putting up 15, 18 a game in the playoffs, but if he can give you 10, 12 points, that's huge. Yeah, if he just gives us a presence down there where it's a scoring threat, which we haven't had a lot of this year, um, you know, he's put a lot of work in. He he gets in the gym on his own and he's working on a couple of things. And I told him just keep it simple. You know, early on in the year, he wanted to try to do all these different moves and things. And I said, now nah, you, you just got to narrow your game down to just a couple specific things. And you know, if we can get him on the on the right block where he can come with his uh, jump hook to his left and uh, the other thing he's doing, we're getting him in some uh, ball screen action where he's screening and diving and he's catching it in traffic and he's starting to finish better. He's starting to catch it better. Um, that's what he did out at uh, Garden City uh, when he had his first kind of breakout game of scoring was he just caught the ball better than what he was doing earlier in the year. And that kind of fed his confidence a little bit. And then recently in, in uh, the last number of games, 
you know, when he gets those opportunities, he's catching the ball and, you know, he's either getting fouled or, or taking it strong to the basket and finishing. So uh, all that stuff has just been a matter of uh, just him putting in a lot of hard work. And he's still got a long ways to go. But at least now we do have a threat to throw it in there. And the guys are gaining some confidence that if they throw it in there, something good's going to happen. Absolutely. And, you know, something I talked about with Coach Proctor is we talked about his quickness and his athleticism for a guy that size. There's so many guys, Division One on down, that are 6'11", 7 foot, but hard to play fast, hard to get out in transition because those guys just can't keep up with some guards out there. And I think that's a, that shows, you know, tra- Charles has a history as a swimmer, and I think you see it when he's out there on the court because he moves pretty well. Uh, you think, you know, the way he moves, he's more like 6'7", 6'8", but there right. was a play last night where there was a loose ball and Charles gets down, gets his fingertips on it, able to slap it over to Javen or Brian, whoever was the point guard out there at that time. But I just, that's a play that, you know, wins games, uh, kind of keeping a possession like that alive. And for a seven-foot center to be the one that's the first to the basketball, I mean, that's rare. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, and he can he can really move up and down the floor. and uh, Just getting him in the habit of doing that all the time uh, is, is what we're trying to get him, that there's opportunities if you just run hard because, uh, you know, a lot of big guys don't want to run as hard down the floor. And the way that he can get out and go, and like I said, I mean, his background, he, he was a baseball player. He, he was a swimmer. He was a good athlete. He just didn't play a lot of basketball when he was younger. And uh, just getting those understandings of different parts of the game, you know, just running hard uh, is a skill in the game of basketball, and that's something that he's still learning. Uh, Javen Kofer had a big night as well uh, for your team last night against Independence. Ended the game with uh, a very respectable 13 points, 5 of 7 shooting, 3 of 4 from downtown. Also had 6 assists. And uh, we've talked, uh, you know, multiple times this year about Javen and, uh, you know, what he can contribute to this team offensively. And uh, I thought it was a good game for his confidence going into the postseason, seeing those outside shots go in, seeing him finish at the rim. But I think also something Coach Proctor mentioned that was a really good point he played really good defense on Corey Curtis Jr. as well for a good portion of that second half. Yeah, we had uh, Janai on Curtis uh, early and and uh, didn't do as good a job. Um, Curtis is a heck of a scorer, and he shoots a lot. You know, he's he's the, I think he's the top scorer in the conference average wise, but he's also the top in uh, shots per game. Uh, but he's a good player. He just doesn't have a lot of help around him, so he's got the green light. And, uh, yeah, I thought when Javen got in there and got on him, uh, really stuck after him a little bit. And when he got at certain spots, uh, the second half, we wanted to go double him and get the ball out of his hands. And I think that was effective. But, uh, yeah, a guy like that can really get it going. I told the guys uh, at our shoot around yesterday before the game, I said, he's going to try to get 40 tonight. This is his last game. They don't have a postseason game. He's going to try to get all he can. So, um, yeah, you know, we just uh, had to be aware of where where he was, and Javen did a good job on him, and uh, you know the result was what it was. Uh, for those of you, uh, thank you, Andrew, for that update. But for those of you here in the in the Coffeeville area, the Southeast Kansas area, the tornado warning has just been canceled. So still some severe thunderstorms right. outside. Still uh, wouldn't recommend going outside. Uh, but the tornado warning is not in effect at this moment in time. So good news there. Uh, but coach, uh, you know something else. Uh, you know really. You mentioned it with uh, Curtis, like you said, just a great scorer. But with a team like Independence that loves to go as fast as they do, loves to get shots up the way that they do, for your defense to hold them to six made threes on the day, I mean, I don't think it was a perfect defensive effort, but it's going to put a lot of pressure on a team like that when they only hit six threes. Yeah, they uh, you know, they started out really good. Um, and at the first media timeout, we just said, hey, we we knew they were going to come like this. You know, it's their last game. They're, they're going to play hard. It's a rival game. It's a sophomore night game and and uh that first part they came out at us pretty good it, but being able to sustain it over the full 40 minutes was has been the challenge for indy all year and uh you know we just i thought did a better job of just getting out there on the three-point line when we played them here they shot 39 threes and uh it's on our guys <laughs> yeah you just don't know how teams are going to play in their last game especially when they know they're not playing in the postseason i said it wouldn't surprise me if they try to put up 50 threes and so we just had to make sure we were out there we were touching it playing our rules and we did a good job where they were limited on the amount of looks that they got and obviously on the amount of makes and coach you know something that really uh sticks out to me when i'm looking at these last two games is we've talked earlier this season that uh you know this team's had some a lot of inconsistencies on the offensive end and you've mentioned you know 
We're not shooting the ball well enough to put up 80, 90 points in a game. But now you have back-to-back -back games with 90-plus points, 93 against Colby, 95 against Indy. And I think what sticks out to me about that is he shot the ball well. He has shot over 50% against Colby, 43% against Independence. But you are, excuse me, 46% against Independence. But 33 free throws against the Colby Trojans and then 26 against the Pirates. And I think we talked about it with Chris being uh, embracing that mentality of getting to the rim, getting right. downhill. And I think this team's really bought into that, where you see Janai getting in the paint more, you see Brian getting inside more, Charles, like you said, getting to the rim a little bit more. This team, I think, has found that they can get points at the free throw line, a good free throw shooting team, and they've been getting to the line more, and it's led to more points. Yeah, and that was a point of emphasis at, at halftime last night, not to settle for the three-pointer. Uh, let's go on the attack. Um, number three for Indy, I, I can't think of his name, but he blocked some shots early in the game, and <coughs> we kind of got away from attacking like we needed to because he did block some shots, but he also picked up three fouls. I said, we just have to keep on attacking them and trying to make these guys guard because I think, I think we'll get some fouls called, and, and we did. Um, you know, Chris, obviously, as we talked about before, big, strong body, and he's got a good handle, and, and he can go on the attack, and he gets fouled a lot, and he's a good free throw shooter. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's got to be our mentality. Yes, it does, and I think, you know, that's – it's good to see this team, I think, obviously winning builds confidence. But I think, you know, this team really, uh, we've talked, I think the overall theme of this year has been, for the most part, strong defense and inconsistent offense. And I think when you have a, a group of guys that are going to the postseason for the first time, uh, I think it's just so crucial and so important for them to see that they can put up 90 points in a game, that they can have success getting to the free throw line, they can, uh, you know, uh, score 50 points in a half. I think that's that's important when you're going, you know, if a potential matchup with, of course, you got to, we'll talk about Pratt here in a few minutes, but if you get to the Barton Cougars, if you get to uh, a team like Hutchinson or Cowley or something like that, uh, it's important for these young guys to see that, okay, if one of these teams go for 80, 90 points, we've done it. We can match it. Yeah, and hopefully we can do that against some of the top-tier teams if we get to that point because um, the teams that we've done that against have been the teams down there where we are, and uh, there's a reason they're down there is generally their, their defense isn't as good. Um, you know, when we get those opportunities, hopefully just like what you're saying, the confidence has built up three out of the last four wins. We've scored the ball well. Now we need to go do it against some good good higher-level teams if we get to that point. we still got to play the game on Saturday, and uh, that game is going to be against Pratt. Let's get uh, talking about the Pratt Beavers. Let's take a quick little two-minute timeout. Uh, we'll be right back here on the Red Raven Sports Network. More with Coach Herkelman as we get ready for the Pratt Beavers in the first round of the Region 6 tournament on Saturday. We're back in two minutes here on the Red Raven Sports Network.
Red Raven Coaches Show here on the Red Raven Sports Network, and we continue our conversation with Coach Jay Herkelman as we get ready for the first round of the Region 6 tournament against the Pratt Beavers. And, uh, Coach, you know, a little bit, uh, yeah, honestly, pretty much the opposite of what Coach Turner is uh, experiencing, where Coach Turner is going up against uh, a team he just saw last weekend, a team that's very fresh on the mind of both teams. Uh, and you're you're going up against a team that's literally the the la the uh, you know the furthest team that you've played in the Pratt Beavers. It was your first game of conference play. Yeah, it was. Uh, up until last night, we we were thinking we were going to be playing Dodge City. Um, you know, after uh, the game against Colby, um, we felt it was going to be Dodge. Uh, after the win last night, I actually even said to the guys, I said, uh, I believe our next game is going to be against Dodge. So we're familiar with them. We had played them uh, just a couple weeks ago and uh, then uh, Pratt won last night and then when it came down to the tiebreaker they split head to head and then uh, went to the next highest ranked team you know from the top on down and they had beaten Cloud so that was a tiebreaker so yeah we're playing Pratt and uh, it was the first team we played in conference and then obviously in the second round uh, back in January uh, we played them again out of their place. We've split with them on the year. We're one and one. Uh, so I think that's going to motivate our guys to to want to get the the grudge match uh, between the two teams. Yeah, and we certainly hope so. And uh, it's kind of funny, obviously, two very different teams uh, from last year to this year. But second straight year, uh, you start the postseason with a home game at Nellis Hall against the Pratt Beavers, where you played them in the quarterfinals last year. That's right. I I forgot who we played in the quarterfinals. I uh, wouldn't even think about that. That We did play... Uh, we played Pratt in the yeah in that home game, and uh, so w hopefully we have the same result as what we did last year. I was gonna say I don't know if 114 points is on the table again, but I'd love if it was. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, coach, I asked Coach Turner uh, earlier in the show, and I'll ask you the same thing. Of course, uh, some really good games across the first round: Cloud County and Colby, uh, Garden City plays Seward, Northwest Tech, who's playing really well. They go up against Dodge City. Uh, what's a team that is playing on Saturday that isn't, of course, you or Pratt? that has impressed you in the matchups uh, that you've had with them this year that you think could really get hot and maybe make some noise in the playoffs? A team other than ourselves? Yes. Um, I'm just, I keep, I'm confused by Garden City. Um, I think they've got a load of talent. Um, they're starting five, and then I see scores, and I know the way they play against us, and I'm like, they're, the first time we played them, they scored 100 and, four or six against us and I told Rusty after the game I says if you guys play like that every night I don't know who beat you and and then they go out and lose the next couple of games and uh you know they've been that way but they they're a team that's got that kind of talent and so if you can get it going the right direction they're a team that's capable um Butler's going through a little bit of turmoil right now they've had some incidents that uh they're frustrated with they got some guys that are suspended so uh the you know, they're looking at uh, playing with minus a couple of their good players in the first game against Cloud, so that's going to be difficult. But, you know, those top three teams are all really good uh, to win. You know, for us, it would be four games. You know, we're going to have to really be on it uh, night in, night out, be focused on it. And uh, those those teams that are in the top, they got to win three games. And whoever does it, I can tell you this has definitely earned it because there are a lot of good teams in this league. Uh, Cloud is sitting there at, at fifth place and is obviously very capable of, of doing it also. So it's uh, it's just a tough league every single night. And uh, whoever wins this region has definitely earned their right to go to the national tournament. Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, of course, your team, the two seed last year, and you handled your business after having the first round bye. But something we saw with Coach Turner and the Lady Ravens last year is sometimes maybe getting that first round by a little bit of a, a hidden curse where, you know, you let a team that played a couple days earlier get some momentum and get some confidence. And we saw Coach Turner's team beat Pratt and then uh, go on the road and beat Hutchinson in in, uh, in uh, the Hutchinson Sports Arena and then play Dodge and beat Dodge. So you let a team in one of these first round games kind of get off to, you know, get their, get their wheels turning. Yeah. Uh, and it could be dangerous. I'm not saying that, you know, like I said, Barton or Cowley or Hutch, like you said, three of the best teams, not just in the conference, in the country, are, are on upset alert or anything like that. But uh, I'm sure there is probably some nerves for some of those coaches, some of those players, where it's like, we just sit here and do nothing and let other teams maybe get some confidence. Yeah, but I like being in that spot. 
just like we were last year. Uh, I know Coach Turner and I, we, we've had that discussion. And uh, I guess when you're in that spot, you try to use it to your advantage. But, you know, last year, all four of the teams that had the first round buys and played the second round games at their home site were the ones that advanced. And the reason is, is because they were, you know, like we were last year, one of the best teams in the conference all year long. Um, so not that it can happen because it does. Uh, teams get upset, you know, and there could be some teams where you look at this Saturday that maybe got upset. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to be one of those teams if we progress past Saturday to be a team that, you know, pulls an upset and, and uh, going out to Barton County. And the thing about our matchup with them is we've played them well both times we played them. And, you know, they're the number one team in the nation for a reason. They're, they have went through this conference with only one loss. Uh, but I like how we've played against them. So if we get to that point, you know, we'll go out there and give it our best shot and see what happens. Absolutely. We look at this Beavers team, and they, uh, <clears throat> they it's a team we haven't seen in a while, but it's a team that we saw in the second matchup uh, when you when you ended up losing by three points to them. They had a, a Division One transfer in Zion Cruz that is really a, a good shooter, a good scorer. He came from DePaul University, and uh, he's dealing with an injury, and he's not going to be available on Saturday. So that's uh, obviously a, a big loss for them in terms of point total, and it's also uh, uh, maybe changes the way your defense kind of schemes up of trying to you know to focus on one particular guy yeah when we played him the first time he wasn't with him he didn't become eligible until semester uh the second semester started and uh when he came in he's really impacted their team um you know he, he is a really good scorer he started out at DePaul and he's the guy that's had a few little issues here and there but he can really play game play the game and he had I think 25 on us out at third place and scored it pretty easy he got hot in the game and and, uh, yeah, we weren't able to overcome it. We lost a close one. Uh, we beat them here fairly soundly, the first game in conference play, to get us off to a good start. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, from what I'm hearing is he has a broken hand. And, like you said, we haven't seen him for a while. Um, but I did watch a little bit of their game with Butler uh, earlier today, and that was just uh, about a week and a half ago, and he was on the sideline with a cast. So, um uh, yeah, I'm not anticipating that he's going to be playing in this game on Saturday. And, Coach, you know, something that interests me about this Pratt team, and I, I can't remember if this was like this when we uh, when we saw them at Nellis Hall or if it's just kind of been something as the year's gone on, but they've got, they've experimented with a lot of different starting lineups. Yeah. They have uh, looks like eight, nine guys that have started a game for them this year. So you really probably don't even know the starting five you're going to see on Saturday. Yeah, it, it's changed a lot. Uh, Coach Odom and I were talking about that today. He was watching the game against uh, Northwest Tech, and uh, they had a different lineup in there, and he's like, that guy didn't even play against us, you know, either game, and he's in the starting lineup, and this other guy, you know. and uh, So, yeah, I'm going to go back and watch a couple of the recent ones, see who are the guys that are, are uh, in there playing, and then, you know, it could be totally different on Saturday, but you only got so many, uh, so it's got to be some of those guys. And I know zero and one are going to be two of them because those two guys can really score the ball for them. Absolutely, they can. And uh, final, a couple of uh, things here as we wrap up the show, Coach, and appreciate, of course, Carter Auto Parts as well as GG's for hosting and uh, the David W. Barnes Funeral Home as well, all for sponsoring the show. But, uh, Coach, you know, I look at this, and uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, of course, uh, heading into the postseason, uh, having depth and having your full rotation so important. And, of course, Pratt not having Zion Cruz is going to be potentially a big loss if he's unable to go. But your team uh, also has a couple guys that are kind of progressing and a little uh, dinged up here and there. We saw CJ, I believe, uh, land hard on, I don't know if it was his ankle or his leg, but uh, late in that game he stayed in it. But uh, uh, he uh, was a, a little giddy after that play. And then, of course, Alvin Cole sprained his ankle out in Hutch, and he's been on the mend from that. So uh, any injury updates you can provide us heading into the, uh, into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, and that's one thing when – other teams have injuries. I really don't have too much sympathy for them this year <laughs> after what we've gone through. So, um, you know, you play with the guys that you got, and that's what we've been doing. And, uh, yeah, last night or last couple of games, we basically had uh, eight guys that were dressed out. And uh, um, that's been, uh, it's been interesting, especially when some fouls start happening out there and then you want to get some guys some rest. But, uh, you know, our uh, – Guys have been able to show that they can play a lot of minutes, and those media timeouts really help. But uh, 
We didn't do too much today in practice. CJ seemed okay. We shot and we lifted today, and, and uh, he was moving okay. He told me last night, even when I took him out, that he was fine. He did hit the floor pretty good. Um, Alvin s thinks he's going to be able to practice tomorrow. I think he's got the green light to try to do some stuff. So hopefully he's, uh, he's going to be able to do some stuff, but his conditioning is going to be bad, and that thing still isn't going to be 100%. It was swelled up pretty good after the Hutch game. Uh, so... You know, we'll we'll see what he can give us uh, come Saturday, and and hopefully he can give us a little bit. Absolutely, and you know, Alvin's another guy. Uh, we haven't talked about it a ton, but he's got a good little post hook to him too, and a little yeah. nice fading jump shot. So if he's able and even even able to give you 10, 12 minutes, having him and Charles, two guys that can have shown they can score the ball inside, that's huge for your team. But final thing I have for you, coach, is we put a bow on this one. Uh, it was uh, it came out a little bit earlier today that Saturday is going to be Fan Appreciation Day yeah. at Nellis Hall, where uh, fans are going to get in for free, as well as uh, you know a little bit of a discount on some of the uh, on some of the. Uh, Reserve seats. That's the word I was looking yeah. for. Uh, but uh, obviously you want a big crowd. That's a big benefit of playing at home in the postseason is having the, the fans uh, on your side and not on the other team's side. But a uh, uh, pretty cool thing that they're doing at Nellis Hall on Saturday. So w what is it about, uh, you know, uh, exciting stuff as uh, you get ready for this game against Pratt? Yeah, uh, when we got the uh, – when I knew that both teams were going to be playing at home, I, I text our athletic director and Tony – and said, hey, you know, since we're both playing at home, why don't we do a fan appreciation night and, and make it free? Um, I said, the red seats, we can decide what we want to do. But, you know, fans have been good to us. Our season, you know, on our side, for the men's side, uh, hasn't been as good as, as what our fans are used to, but they've still been coming out. And, and I appreciate that. And uh, so I just thought, give them a little reward, and hopefully that will entice them to come out. And it's our last game playing at home, and so hopefully uh, we'll get a nice crowd. I know that uh, the Kansas-Houston game is a uh, big game. It's starting at 3 o'clock, but, hey, Houston's already got the Big 12 wrapped up, so uh, that game really doesn't have any bearing on anything. So all those Jayhawk fans, they can come on out. They can record that thing and watch it when they get home later on. But, Hopefully uh, by doing this and uh, people uh, know that we appreciate them uh, and the support that they give us all year. And, and I just thought it was something, you know, that we could do for them. Absolutely. Both the Jayhawks and Cougars have locked up top three seeds. You know, yeah, that's, that's yeah. all taken care of. Yeah. Uh, but uh, appreciate Even if it. Kansas wins, they're not going to win the Big 12 this no. year. So it's just. I was going to uh, say, we're just on to the conference tournament. Yep. yep. Uh, appreciate it, Coach Herkelman, good enough to join us here on a night where uh, we, we weren't sure what was going to happen. And, yeah. uh, battled some severe weather, but uh, got through it, and uh, we're excited for the Region 6 tournament on Saturday. But big thanks to Andrew for uh, being adaptable, being versatile tonight as we uh, we moved from radio to YouTube, and uh, we weren't sure what was going to unfold. Weather on the nines by Andrew. <laughs> Oh, love it. Uh, but we'll be back in action, of course, on Saturday, Red Raven Sports Network and US 98 simulcast presentation of the Red Raven doubleheader playoff game. Uh, like I said uh, last night, rumor is Chris Freund will be joining me. That's The ball's in his court. I, I'm throwing him an alley-oop. We'll see if he dunks it. Uh, but we, uh, uh, we have a lot of great stuff coming your way. Hopefully uh, we'll hear you on Saturday. Hopefully you're at Nellis Hall on Saturday. But if you're not, hopefully you're watching the game. But big thanks to everybody at GG's, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. I'm Shane Neal saying so long. And have a great rest of your night.